welcome to In The Loop Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Prentice. Today, I am excited and honored to be joined by a television and fitness legend, Butler's very own Paul Guadino. Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks for inviting me. Well, Paul, and I'm sure the first question not only residents here would like to know, but everyone, how are you? I am fine. I'm really enjoying life. I go dancing a couple days a week. I'm starting to work out again. My legs were getting heavy. I was getting lazy down Florida with no steps. So keep don't every time you use the steps, remember that's exercise. That's awesome. So how do you enjoy Florida? Oh, I love it. It's been there almost four years and now I'm really getting into it. That's insane that it's been four years already. St. Petersburg, yep. Yeah. Um, so do you miss doing the daily fitness show? Yes, you know, it's so funny, you know, I'm out of this. And I have nightmares sometimes to start my show again. And of course, I started on a shoot and there's right of the camera people and fixing up a new set. And it's frustrating. I mean, it's like I want to get back. To, I don't know why. You know, I did it for 44 years here. So why would I want to do it again? But I don't know. I guess it's part of me. So 44 years, you won the Guinness record for longest family. Two times, yep. Two times. One for the longest show in America, the family fitness, and then one for a family because most people don't have the same family for 44 years. That's incredible. <laughs> and I'm sure you still have people that are just finding you from your old videos. Yes, it's amazing. Down for, Everywhere I go, somebody recognizes you, and it just amazes me, you know. Do you miss doing a daily fitness show? Do you have that itch? I know you said the nightmare part. Yeah, I guess so. I must miss it a little bit. You know, I was a shoemaker before that. So, I mean, going from a shoeshine boy to <laughs> TV was something. And what got the itch for you to start doing a show? Well, I was a scrawny kid when I was small, believe it or not, at 14. I wanted to do something for myself. So I started working out, joined the YMCA, and then... Uh, I used to watch Jack LaLanne back in the 1950s. So you older people, you'll remember the 50s. So he was my kind of idol there. I've never met him, came close a couple of times. And I just like to do that. I just like helping people. And then I had classes at the YMC for many, many years, all around the community, everywhere. Wow. Um, is there a part of exercising or fitness that you enjoy more than anything? I just enjoy working with people. Okay. Really do. Okay. That, they turn me on and they keep me motivated. That's, that, hey, and that's the positive part that you need to have. What are some tips for, you know, not only beginners, but people that are, I've always wanted to get into exercise or fitness, but um, is it a motivation thing? Is it a commitment? Uh, what are some tips for those that really would like to, um, just make this the love that you have. Well, Seth, like yourself and like Carmen, like Matt, when you see somebody 84, you expect them to be falling apart and everything, and you wonder how you're going to look at 65, you know? <laughs> so this is a, a, a good part of the motivation. Meet somebody that's real, that is enthusiastic about life, and it'll mo motivate you, believe it or not. And I've done that to many, many people, and it's, it, it helps me too because I'm, to see a person 80 get excited about seeing your exercise, it's great. That's awesome. So that, and then uh, the idea, what, how are you gonna look like at 65 or 70 or whenever you retire? Because everybody thinks about that. So that's why you should do a little bit each day, and uh, don't be down if you can't do it real good at the beginning. Just keep trying to do something, and eventually you'll be able to be happy with yourself. And I know that your workouts over the years actually evolved because, you know, you had people that might not be able to get out of a, a wheelchair and do some of your workouts, might not be able to get upstairs, but you actually tailored your workouts so that it was good for anyone in any shape or uh, right. size. Because I used to watch Jack Lane, a lot of times they'd do one handstand, I, I mean, uh, one arm stay, uh, push up and they'd hang from a pool boat and all, who can do that? Yeah. I mean, I, there are people who do this is great, but I want the, the average common person. What can I do? They're afraid to go to the gym because they're embarrassed they can't do much. So if they can just start moving their arms easier in the chair, just moving their legs, even if they had an open heart or a surgery like I did, and uh, it's amazing. And you feel good you're doing something. Even putting a pair of tennis shoes on, Seth, <laughs> you feel like young again. Hey. Oh, and, and so psychologically... It makes a big difference. Uh, for sure. And, and your positivity and enthusiasm for it actually just flows f through you. <laughs> and I'm like, now I just want to go out and run, right. uh, run and them out is, right this now. Is, this is what I hope to, to give. Yes, That's for sure. That's a gift. For sure. And 
you know, I know that not only your passion for fitness, but you're also a veteran, and you started the Freedom Towels back in uh, 2007. Do you still do the Freedom Towels? Yes, I do. I do it in Florida. Okay. So I'm um, spreading it out all over. In fact, I just got an order just the other day here in Butler. Nice. So, and they're, they're, people are happy, but then we got to thank our veterans because they're our heroes. God died for us for our sins, and the heroes died for our freedom. So that's why it's so important to take care of veterans. No, I totally agree with you. Um, if people are still interested in getting one of your freedom towels, do you have a website for this? Yeah, paulgodinogmail.com. It took a long time for me to get off zoominternet.net. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they can get a hold of me there and write to me or email me or whatever, send a picture or whatever. Perfect, and we'll share that information for right. everyone. Um, so I have a fun question for you. Since you're a, a legend in television, another television legend has a biography movie coming out later this year. Fred Rogers will be played yeah. by Tom Hanks. So a question for you is, who would play the exercise man, Paul Guadino? Oh, boy. You really put me on the spot there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Paul Nider from Grove City. He's so excited with the program. He's been on it 21 years, and... I, I was there the other day, and you took me everywhere, and people still remember. They wanted to take a picture with you, you know. And they, they get motivated, too. And it's what, again, Seth, what's nice, when they're older people, because it's hard to get anybody motivated. But enthusiasm is the best thing you can share with somebody. And so keep that in mind. Every, any little good thing you say to your son, your daughter, or a friend, you'd be amazed, and maybe 10 years that comes back, and how you impressed them. So it's very important. So that's a good question. You've done this for so long. Have you actually been able to give to generations? So not only you know a mother or father, but kids and now grandkids and, and down the line. Seth, so that's what's so funny. Everywhere I go, they were their mothers now. You know, because forty-four years is a long time, and yeah. of course, they people knew me before that. So now they're, they're they tell the kids I was on his show. You know, so that's that's a funny feeling. It's just like a teacher, as you know, I I taught him in school. And now look at him; he's the president. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so that's that's good. It's it's a payback every day. That's funny. No, but uh, is there anything that you would like to share? Any stories? You know, now that you've come home for a little bit, is there something that every time you come back, you know, just sparks this happy memory that you have? Uh, that's true. You always have happy memories. And the thing is, I want people to realize, especially kids that think they can't make it, uh, that they're, they're, they're worthless, not to think that way. Change your thinking. Find somebody that excites you. And then follow their ideas. Ask them what they do. You know, what you eat or what do you do? Uh, why are you so enthusiastic? And today, very few people are happy. And you can have all the money in the world, Seth. And I don't have a lot of money, believe it or not. But again, I'm happy. Right. I'm enjoying life. And I take it day by day. I had open heart surgery back in 19, I mean, when I was uh, 79. And I worked through it. And I did it on television, showing people you can, you can improve yourself. So don't worry about your age. Worry about what you can do. And that'll help you a lot. And again, try. And if you fail, try again, try again. And you will become uh, good at whatever you do. Uh, Just don't quit. And don't don't stop thinking positive. That's actually a key word. Yeah. You know, actually key words for a lot of people of positivity is something well, just like negativity negativity spreads just as much as positive everybody says always think of the negative and then that way if it doesn't happen you don't have to worry but you don't want to think negative you have to think positive even even if it doesn't happen what do you gain from thinking negative there's no gain so that's the important thing are there any funny stories or bloopers that ever happened while you filmed your show Oh, yes. In my early times with Armstrong Utility, uh, the Armstrong, that goes way back. <laughs> Armstrong, we would do a show, we had the lights up, and a light would fall down. You know, in those days, the lights were hot, and they would actually catch on fire, <laughs> <laughs> trying to step them out. And uh, people would be on the show, and I had flowers around and stuff like that, and they would be doing jumping jacks or something like that. And hit something would fly up in the air they would run and hide behind something they were so embarrassed but uh, you know and uh, it took a long time for me to get used to it actually 10 years before i felt comfortable wow now i feel like it's my home right no so it takes time even though you're in it yeah no totally um 
is there anything that uh, you miss that you're like, ah, I really should come back to Butler, or do you just enjoy that warm weather? No, uh, again, people say, how can you stand that hot? But when you're over 80 or even your 70s, you you need the heat. And I get, used to get a lot of colds here in Butler. And then there I got used to the heat. And then it's like anything else. It's cold, it's rainy. you got to keep thinking positive. And the, the, the sun eventually comes out eventually, no matter where you live. <laughs> Any last words for our audience today, Paul? I just want to, everybody here that's watched me for the last 44 years and still watched me on YouTube and all that, that I appreciate their uh, their friendship and also their uh, encouragement. Because as you get older, you still need encouragement because you have nobody to, to help you, to m motivate you. So keep thinking positive and when you say, have something, say something good to somebody, say it to them. Don't wait till they die or tell their relatives. Tell them while they're alive. Always, I always think today's my last day and I enjoy life. Like I don't have cancer, but if I had cancer, you take it day by day. And we have to do that. And we have to forgive ourselves and forgive other people and not get mad at people. You can, be, you can disagree, but agree to disagree and go on. Well, Paul, you've uh, not only taught me, but I'm sure you've taught uh, a lot of people that have been listening to this and those that have watched you for years. I just thank you for your time, your commitment, and your positivity. Thank you so much. Time is I wish I had a lot of yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you still do have a lot of time because there's a lot of people that can learn from you. Thank you so much for being here. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop.